What are SAS and Compass? And how on earth could I use them with Foundation to help me build a better web? If those questions have ever crossed your mind, I'd highly encourage you to check out lesson two of my Next Steps course on Zurb Foundation. In this lesson, we'll give you all the information you could ever need to know about getting started with pre-processed CSS. I'll see you there. Hello and welcome to the second lesson in this Next Steps Foundation course. In the last lesson, we went ahead and built a prototype for our single page design of this Kickstarter project. Here in lesson two, we'll be taking a crash course in SAS and talking about exactly what it is, why we use it, and how we can use it with foundation. In doing so, we'll get SAS set up to use with our foundation project so that we can pre-process and compile CSS on the fly. We'll also transfer the prototype that we built in lesson one with vanilla CSS into a SAS enabled version. With that, let's go ahead and get started by heading over to the SAS website at sas-lang.com. Here we can see from their own words, SAS is the most mature, stable, and powerful professional grade CSS extension language in the world. From this, we can gather that SAS is an extension to the CSS language. What this means is that SAS adds additional functionality onto the existing CSS language. What we gain from this is the ability to do more with our style sheets. And we'll get into this in great detail as we work through these lessons. Down below this, we can see a few quick highlights of some of the features of the SAS language. First, as an extension of CSS, it is 100% compatible with vanilla CSS stylings and libraries. It's also extremely feature rich. In fact, it's more so, in fact, it's got more features packed into it than any other CSS extension language in the world. This is actually pretty important for an extension to any language that we use as this means that we've got the most comprehensive library available. It's also been around for about eight years, which when talking about CSS is actually pretty impressive. With its large community of developers supporting it with continual updates and maintenance fixes, we can also rest assured that we're using a very reliable and robust extension. And of course, you can use it with any number of frameworks, including Compass, which we'll be using throughout these lessons to complete our project. While we could talk all day about what SAS is and what it offers, I think the best way to really drive it home is to go over a couple quick and dirty examples of how SAS differs from vanilla CSS. Let's go ahead and head over to our editor. And in traditional vanilla CSS, if we wanted to style a paragraph with white text, and a white and white links, we would do it simply like this with two different paragraph stylings and two different white color specifications. In SAS, this takes on a different, more dynamic form. Here, above our stylings, we can specify a color variable which we set to white. This could be set to any color we want and we can create as many of these variables as we want as well. Underneath this declaration, we can go right on styling, but instead of manually specifying the white color for each element, we simply reference that variable that we described up above. Now, anytime that we want to make a change to elements that make use of this variable, all we have to do is change this one instance. No longer do we have to go scouring through our style sheets to find each and every style that uses this color. We change it in one place and save ourselves gobs of time. Let's go ahead and copy some elements that we might be familiar with. Let's create a main content paragraph with a specific padding and color. We'd also like to specify some link styles, as well as a small paragraph style. 
in vanilla CSS, you can see here that we've got some redundant code. We've had to specify three different main content elements. With SAS, this takes on a different approach that is much cleaner and easier to organize. We can nest each of these elements within the parent element. We'll go ahead and set another variable here for the color because we might as well use them. And we'll start off with our main content element, just like we did above. Except this time, we'll specify the paragraph element as a nested element, within which we add our padding top and text color. And then we can nest yet again the paragraph link style, as well as the small style. Again, this helps us clean up our code by removing some of the redundancy. Moving right along, another great feature of SAS is that it allows us to use mathematical operations. This can come in handy in a number of different ways. Any place where you'd like to use dynamic styles based off of other predefined styles, we can use math operations. For example, if we were to create a middle content section where we'd like to describe the width as the entire width of the page minus the width of the left-hand section, we can do this dynamically by using a page width variable and a left width variable that we would define above. Within this middle style, all we have to do is subtract one from the other and we're given a dynamic width based on two different elements. Very handy and useful in a number of different situations. One of the most useful features of SAS is to use predefined styles in a dynamic manner. Let's go over a quick example. Say we had two different header panels, very much like the panel that we use in our prototype. We'd like to have one with a white background and the other with a black background. We might make use of these panels in dozens of different places throughout our code. In traditional vanilla CSS, we'd have to redefine each of these panels anytime we wanted to tweak any little thing about them. However, with SAS, we can set up these panels once as a mix-in that can then be inherited by custom panels that use its elements. All we have to do is put an at mixin before our style, and in these parentheses, we can also include some variables that we might want to pass to this mixin, such as background color. Now, anytime we want to use this main header panel with a different color, all we have to do is import the main header panel, which if we want a white background, it will inherit that by default, or with a black panel, we simply specify the color we'd like it to be. This could be any color defined anywhere within our style sheet, as long as we import that main header panel. A very powerful tool that we'll make use of later on. Yet another useful feature of SAS is the ability to use if and switch statements. What this allows us to do is to serve different styles depending on variables passed into the style element. For example, we could style our link with three different colors based on the value of a variable that we pass in. In this case, if that variable is one, we serve a link with a color red. If it's two, we serve a link with a color blue. And if it's anything else, the link is white. SAS also gives us the ability to use loops to help us produce large quantities of stylings in a minimal amount of code. For example, here I can create numerous different image styles with only three lines of code. All I have to do is set up an increment variable that I'm going to have loop from the values 1 through 10, 
And then in the body of this loop, I can simply specify my image selector with a different identifier taking on the form of that incremental number. And we can also make use of this incremental variable to increase the height for each of these successive images. I'll go ahead and type out the code here below that this would actually produce. We would have 10 different images labeled 1 through 10 with increasing heights on each, looking something like this. In addition to for loops, we can also use each loops, which are very much the same, with the exception that they make traversing through arrays much easier. For example, let's loop through each flavor in this array of cherry, blueberry, and strawberry. Just like we did above, this would produce a different image for each of those three different elements in the array. Looking something like this. And with that, you should have a you should have a decent understanding of the power that the SAS extension gives us. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the foundation website now and take a look at how we actually get this installed and working with our foundation project. Back on that download page that we saw in the last lesson, if we instead select that far right SAS package, we can see that we need to install a few things before we can actually start using SAS with our foundation project. First, we need to install Git, which is simply a version control system that commands the tools that we'll use. In order to install this, we simply need to follow the link, download the package corresponding to our chosen operating system, and install Git. For Node.js, we do very much the same thing by downloading the binary we'd like to use for our respective OS and installing the packages necessary. For Ruby, we again download the corresponding package for our chosen environment and install away. You really shouldn't have any issues installing these three utilities as they're pretty seamless and easy to figure out, so I won't cover that aspect here. Now onto the command line interface. This similarly is accomplished in a very easy way. This time, all we have to do is use these commands that use Bower to install and manage Foundation and any third-party libraries. All we have to do is type in npm install g bower grunt cli into our command line, and Bower will be installed on our system. Now, in order to install the foundation command line interface, all we have to do is use gem to install foundation with this command in step two. And with that, we're ready to move on to getting our project set up. First thing we do is install compass, which is simply an extension of SAS, giving us new libraries and tools to use. This is installed very much the same way that we just installed foundation. Once we've got that taken care of, we can create our first project by issuing the command foundation new and then the name of our project. I'll demonstrate this for you. A quick note here, I'm using Linux as a backend for my web server, so any commands that I use will take on the form of a Linux command. Here we'll create our next steps project in our web server's root directory, and we can see that dependencies are installed and our project is created. If we take a look at this directory that's created, we can see we have some Bower components, config files, gem files, as, as well as our typical index.html file, but you'll notice here we have a lack of a CSS directory. 
Instead, we're given an scss directory, which is where all our stylings will take place before they're compiled into the actual CSS files. With our project set up and ready to go, before we start editing any of our style sheets, all we have to do is tell Compass to watch our scss directory for any changes that might take place so that they can be compiled into our project's CSS directory. What this will do for us right now is actually create our first CSS files with those default SCSS files located in the SCSS folder. With that taken care of, we can jump on over to the browser and point it at our new project directory, which is next underscore steps. And we can see we're greeted with that default Welcome to Foundation web page that we know and love. With that, we should have a pretty good understanding of what SAS is and how we're going to use it with Foundation to build a better website. We also were able to download and install all the required packages to get SAS set up with our Foundation project. In our next lesson, we'll go over a few best practices for going about editing Foundation CSS elements in a SAS environment, as well as converting our prototype built-in lesson one with vanilla CSS into our new SAS environment. In doing so, we'll also touch on creating our own mixins. We'll see you then.